Okay, so this is gonna be a shorter little second channel discussion. Hi, second channel people. I'm gonna be going over my weapons and how good they are. This isn't gonna cover everything, everything. I don't really care enough to talk about the Octobrushes or Explosures, for example. I'm gonna talk about Sorellabrella and Kenta Rapid because there's no real reason to use Vibrella and I don't really like any of the other Rapids, but we're gonna be covering all three Range Blasters and all three uh, dynamo rollers. Even though I'm pretty new at dynamo, I feel like I have a very good understanding of it. So, how many hours do I have in the game? I just passed 9,000, actually. All right, so let's start with Brella. All right, so Brella right now is in a pretty interesting state. Basically, it started to fall off because they nerfed its damage, is the main thing. But I'd argue that meta shifts were a big thing. For one, well, I'd say the damage can make it inconsistent. I'd say its close range two shot is still very good. Like as long as you're within a solid distance, its two shot is very reliable. Where it becomes inconsistent is around this range. Like more, a little bit outside your effective range. Which means you have to be a bit closer than you would normally. And even then it's still a bit inconsistent. So this means you have to get closer to things like Splash, 52, etc. The other downside of the damage nerf that people including myself didn't talk about is damage to objects. I didn't think it would be as important because it's mostly stuff like the Rainmaker Shield. However, when Kagal came into the meta, it ended up being pretty important because your ability to break wall was lessened, and that's pretty big for it. The other thing that hurt Brella that was more indirect is missiles. Missiles are really bad for Brella to fight with because you basically can't shield. You have to drop it, move around, etc., and it doesn't work for it very well. Now, Sorrel Brella still is a very solid kit. Auto bomb is nice for poking and it's good for it because it can't really do too much. Like with a normal bomb, it would use too much ink. And spot bomb rush is of course great for painting, etc. I still think the kit you want is a mobility one. Being able to keep up with shooters is really important because a lot of times against like quad shooter, they just won't fight you. That's the main way to deal with it. You're not gonna output as much bomb rushes as even something like a splash because you're a much more ink hungry weapon. The other side I think you can do on zones is an LD object shredder build. Just basically playing for the extra damage to wall with your main sub and special weapon and a bunch of stuff like that. Daft Tusky, thanks for the raid, by the way. We were talking about how good my weapons are. Uh, I hope you stream on well. So, do I think Brella is good? Uh, sort of. I think it's high tier. I've kind of settled on thinking it's high tier. I thought for a while that this was still a top tier weapon and was just 50 times harder to use anything with it. But honestly, I think the counterplay to Brella is pretty significant at this point. It's still good in the right situations, the right maps, the right comps, and being able to shield things is still a useful niche. But the main way to deal with it is really just running, like, a bunch of missile spam. Like, I think V-Shot, I mean, sorry, I think v and K-Shot are really good against it, like, in a duo. And in general, just, it's really easy to force fights with Brella when it can't hide its shield up. And Brella's main thing is controlling areas and sapping resources, but it's a lot easier to kind of deal with that right now. Realistically, I think a lot of this nature of this weapon is how it is in Splatoon 2. I would love to see it get a little bit of buffs, like on the ink efficiency or something. But I think it's still not in a bad spot. I think it's just easier to counterplay with things like missiles. That's all my real thoughts on it are. Alright, that was the easiest one. Okay, Rapid. So, K-Rapid fell off pretty hard when K-52 came out. I thought it became from, like, yeah, it's pretty good at dealing with meta options to, yeah, nope, it's not really as good at it. I still stand by a lot of what I said. I don't think it's that good against a lot of the peak meta options. Like, shooters, by nature, will have a bit more mobility. You can still wall things out, but it's not going to be as effective as something like a CDS that will naturally play in your weapon's range. However, I think with the shifts to missiles and less K-52, I think Krapid still... A very higher potential top tier. I still think the Torp combo for it is very strong. Baller has definitely gone a bit weaker, mostly because there's just a lot of bombs. But Missiles, Neo Splash, and a bunch of stuff is more tick damage. And the more tick damage there is in the meta, the better it is for Brella. Because Brella really likes... I'm sorry, for Rapid. For Rapid. Because Rapid really likes to play off of other people's damage and be able to capitalize it. So more Splash, more Missile... Etc. Stuff like that is still really good for it. So I think Crapit's getting better. Uh, we're seeing less K-52 because people are playing K-Shot. And also K-52 isn't that fun to play. So a lot of K-52 players aren't playing it as much. Kind of the same thing that happened with Bamboo. But I don't think it's as bad as people said as it is right now. Like if I was on a team in competitive and trying to like still win stuff. This is probably what I default to playing. Like I build a team comp around K-Rapid and I probably just play Crapit. Because I think this really is like the big, like, weapon that 
is pretty good out of the things I play. I think it's useful in a ton of situations. Okay. Well, great. That's a non-controversial picks out of the way. Let's get to the three range blasters. Where even is my gear, dude? Uh, I don't keep anything organized anymore. I guess we'll just use, uh, where's my standard gear? Dude, where is it? Oh, I'm on the second screen. That's why I can't tell where anything is. Okay. Range blasters. So, I think recently a lot of people have been getting a more positive opinion on Range Blasters. I've seen Pika posting that it's not as bad. I've seen Kyo posting that it's not as bad. I think people are kind of, like, looking at it and being like, Oh, yeah, man, it's not as bad as people say it is. Like, it's definitely better right now, etc. Um, I'm not here to answer questions about gear right now. Sorry, I'll talk about it another time. It's not that important. Anyway, uh, as for Range Blaster, here's the thing, okay? Here's the thing about Range. It does still have, like, decently pronounced strengths. Like, the one-shot is always going to be a threatening thing about it. Like, regardless, it's something that's going to be, like, a big threat on the match. And even the two indirects, like, have solid range. Like, just for a range comparison, real quick, with KR Epid. Make blasters their own fucking class, Nintendo. Rapid barely outranges range. Like, or not even barely. Like, there are very, very similar range values. So it actually has a lot better poking power than a lot of people think. Like, it is a solid range value. It's not as good because it's not as fast and technically, like... But yeah, you can see it's similar. It's still pretty damn solid at that. And, you know, I say range blaster is bad, a lot of which does have to do with Splatoon 2. Like, obviously going into Splatoon 3, taking away stuff like armor or spectacles that force you to move or having it be more fight-based will make range blaster better. That being said... Also, I switched to the wrong range instinctively. That being said... I think range is very dependent on three factors. One, your opponent's comp and play style. Two, your team comp. And three, it's weapon kit. So, I'll get right off the bat that I don't think the range is very good. The main thing it has is suction bomb, but it uses way too much ink for the weapon. You only really get two shots afterward. It's too gear dependent. The special's 200p that takes too long. It's okay on some maps for the bomb spam, but this isn't really the one you would ever want to use. Like, straight up, it's just not that good at anything in particular. And so a lot of people will be going over to CRB, and I have seen more CRB. And I know, like, Kyo made a tweet about it as a joke, but, like, honest thoughts on CRB. CRB is not as bad as people says it is. Yes, that's true. CRB is not as bad as people says it is. That being said, there is no reason to use CRB. Period. There is no reason to use it. Let's talk about the bubbles. Okay. Bubbles are still pretty good. Range does not do a lot of damage to them. It's a two-shot to pop, and the indirects don't do a lot to the bubbles themselves. It's mostly the directs that do your solid damage to it. It's very slow and very ink-hungry, so it's not very good at popping it like that. That being said, this is going to take forever to farm them. There are at least 170p, so like, hey, I'll give it that. That being said, if we can get... It's going to take forever to farm this thing, dude. All right. That being said... You can bubble combo with them. That's a thing. By using curling like that. I didn't use the second combo. Like, whatever. You can bubble combo with them. I have two problems with this. Right off the bat. With bubbles. One, it has the Mach 3 problem. Range wants to run a form of QR. A little bit of sub saver. Something like that. It wants to have some other form of gear. It really likes to run stuff to make it more consistent at doing its job. And with CRB, you are investing some special power up into the bubble combo itself. So you can't do that as much. Secondly, there are just flat out other bubble options. The bubble combo is not special compared to something like Foil Squeezers, Bubble Combo, or Kenta Juniors. There is no real standout niche to do this. The only real reason you'd want to play this thing is like, okay, maybe I want bubble combo, but also the main weapon of range. In which I'm saying, why the fuck do you want both of those things? There are better options in both areas. It's not really worth it. So yeah, CRB's kit is kind of outclassed. It's not as bad as people say it is. It can still bubble combo. It is still a decently cheap bubble. And it can't do nothing with it. That being said, it's a lot easier to stop this combo than you think. It's not that great with it, etc. On top of that, the other big problem is curling is not a bomb. So I will go over this a thousand times, but blasters really need bombs. This is the same situation with V-Rapid all over again. 
Except a little bit better because at least Carling can paint and do a bit of things. You want a bomb to poke. Range and most blasters are near fucking worthless without pain control. Okay? Near fucking worthless. Giving them a bomb allows them to pressure people without committing. Because range is a very committal main weapon. And it also allows you to paint, farm, special, etc. And that will bring me to Grim. So, here's the TLDR of the entire range conversation. Range is bad, but Grim has a kit that's good enough to carry it. And range is still has some form of strengths. Nothing in this game does not have a strength. Like, even fucking stuff like GooTuber has strengths. Like, you can point out, yeah, range still has a one-shot. Yeah, of course it has something. Every weapon has something. No weapon can do nothing well. That's just not a thing in this game, which is good. So, Grim hard carries this kit. Why? Number one, burst bombs. Take damage. Poking power. Not using a lot of your ink tank. Being able to combo more situationally. Breaking ink armor. Comboing with teammates. The list goes on. The main thing burst bomb doesn't do for this weapon is break objects. Like, it's not going to help you against K52. That wall will still fuck you up. If you try to rush a fire fin and they throw a wall, there's still nothing you can do. Burst Bomb is not perfect for it. It's why something like Splat Bomb would technically be better. Because you get that same potential. Yes, it costs a little bit more. But the versatility of having a Splat Bomb is much more useful on it. Ten of Missiles is pretty easy. Like, Missiles are good with it. It is still not an aggro special. Giving range something it can do when it goes in would be great. But it doesn't really need one either. Missiles are still something you can be relatively near your position. Pop, use quickly, and be okay. That's fine. So, when range sees use, it's basically run with a bunch of tick damage. You want a C-Jet, because the C-Jet can tick damage, and it can also raid through, like, wall or something. Support Neo Splash is good with it, Mini is good with it, Burst Bombs are good with it, Zapper k shots good with it, Explos is good with it, etc, etc. You run tick damage, basically. You run a bunch of tick damage to combo with the main weapon or to combo with teammates. Range is not always playing by itself. Like, the best range comps... Don't always just have range being super solo. Like, they will burst bomb for their teammates' ray, etc. Like, part of that is Grim allowing you to be more versatile. And it gives you more adaptation. That all being said, even then, the opponents really just need to fucking adapt and run stuff that deals with tick damage comps. Play in ways that deals with it, and you'll mitigate it. And technically, there's honestly better tick damage comps than range. This is not the only weapon with Burst Bomb and Missiles. Mini has that kit, and Dooley's has that kit. Dooley's less important, but Mini is a much better option for this for the most part. If you want, like, a long-distance pressure, Armor Rapid or even fucking K-Rapid is better. So is range as bad as people say it is? No, it has uses. It's probably around mid to maybe high tier if I feel really fucking generous with it. That being said, it still has counterplay. It requires a comp being or built around it, and it's hard carried by its kit. I know people don't want to say things aren't hard carried by their kit unless they're a special spammer, but range is hard carried by its kit. Grim is a very carry kit. It definitely boosts the fuck out of the weapon. I'm sorry if you don't want to hear that. That's how it is. Right. So let's go to the more interesting thing. Recently, I guess, which is Dynamo. This is such a hard weapon to judge. Okay, let's go over Dynamo's big strength, okay? This is the actual best thing about it that people don't talk about. Horizontal flick damage. Like, not one-shot damage. They're, like, overall, like, distance damage. You can hit someone with a small amount of damage from, like, three lines, three and a third lines away if you're lucky. Like, that is genuinely pretty good. Vertical flick can allow you to do tick damage, though generally it'll be a little lower from further away. Dynamo actually has pretty threatening tick damage. It's just on a very large cooldown. Okay. So that's pretty good about it. Dynamo's paint is not terrible, Okay. Let's get that out of the way. It has painting range. It's inconsistent, but it's still pretty solid. Like, this is stupid because look at this giant bit in the middle that's not painted, which means it's a bit worse than it looks like, but hey, this is still solid paint range. The thing you have to remember is, like, here is a... S oh, fuck. Here is a seven-flick dynamo, okay? This is a main-a-main saver. 
okay? That's my Dynamo Flix, okay? Here's what you're competing with. And by the way, I can start recovering my health immediately. Dynamo has to wait like a second or so. I can I can recover it immediately. That's the problem. It's not paint output. It's cooldown. Even with the buffed ink efficiency they gave it in two, Dynamo has a massive cooldown in between the pressure it puts out. Now, I personally don't have a problem with this. I actually like that. I think that's more than fair if Dynamo had good paint, okay? It has solid paint. It does not have good paint. If Dynamo actually outpainted stuff like shooters, it having this cooldown, or preferably an even worse one, like I've talked about it being more ink hungry, would actually be completely fair and fit the weapon. You would have to paint at proper times or be a good bit of cooldown. That's my big issue number one. It's its paint, like, output is a lot lower. Secondly is its damage. Dynamo gets away with a lot because people forget how its damage range actually is. That is horizontal flick range with some MPU, okay? Around there, maybe a bit more if you aim down perfectly, okay? For reference... Shooters with 2% of spacing will be able to stay out of your range and hit you. Short range shooters match that. Okay? And vertical flick has a similar problem. It's a bit less than pro range. Like, pro is a little over three lines. Vertical flick is around 2.75. This part of my dynamos use MPU to make this a little bit better. These numbers are a bit more manageable. So... Dynamo is not necessarily bad at anything, with the sole exception of vertical flicks, uh, vertical flick speed. That is the only really mega drastic thing. So that's the part about Dynamo that I will agree with. I don't think it actually has that drastic weaknesses when compared to other weapons. Like, it does solid damage to armor if you get close enough. It can do, like, up to 180 damage, especially with MPU. It has good flick painting distance. Its horizontal flick chips people from a bit away. It's not as bad in the spot as other people think it is. So, the real problem is the outclassed nature of these kits. Now, Dynamo does not have bad kits, but it does not stand out either. V Dynamo... Mine is actually pretty nice for it. It keeps you from being rushed. And Dynamo can paint and vertical flick pretty well at a distance. I don't mind this not having a bomb. That's actually okay. Because Dynamo can do things with the main weapon when it doesn't have map control. So something like mine works pretty well with it. That being said, it should be pretty obvious this thing competes with Custom Jet. The best Dynamos playing the Dynamo run a fuck ton charge up and play for Stingray and paint. C-Jet just does that better. It paints better. It paints longer. It'll get more raids, even with the 10 points for special. V Dynamo is still not bad, but it has to deal with C Jet. Alright, that's the problem with that kit. Gold Dynamo is the armor output. Gold Dynamo does not get enough armors. This is the Dynamo kit that's 190p. That's actually a huge deal with it. It has bombs. It can't poke with it as well as other supports, but it can still poke with bombs, and its paint is decent. You can get an armor at first, fine. But later into the game, it gets really hard to output a higher amount of armors. You have to be very careful with your positioning. And I think that's the big problem with it. I think this one can get ran over very easily by other weapons having a higher armor output. The kit I have the most faith in is Kensa Dynamo. This is the kit I think is the best. For two reasons. First, the sub-weapon is easily the most useful for it. You can use it to paint walls or paint your feet. It actually pretty much directly makes up for Dynamo's lack of paint. And on top of that, even though it's really weak, even a little bit of passive paint from Sprinkler is honestly really fucking helpful for amplifying this weapon's paint. So Sprinkler, while it's normally a pretty trash sub, is actually pretty decently helpful with Dynamo. It still would not be better than having like a bomb, but it's not as bad as people say it is. 
Secondly, Booyah. There aren't a lot of Booyah options. This still doesn't get Booyah a lot, but it can still get it a good bit, especially with Sprinkler and being 180p. It's a very good support special that you can use to counter other supports, and I think that can fit team comps. Like, having something to deal with a bomb rush or just stall people from dropping works well, and it allows you to run this alongside something like an end zap and a junior without the comp being weird. I actually really like this Dynamo for fitting in specific places. Kens Kensa 50D still outputs more Booyah, but Dynamo has more painting range. Heavy can still do the more painting range, but Dynamo has angles. This technically is the one Dynamo kit that I think has reasons to see use over its other options. I think in general it's just a bit better and a bit more niche. Mainly due to the lack of B options. I would say the Dynamos are all around mid-tier as well. I don't think any of these are low tier either. I don't think this is as good as Grim is. I know that's going to sound shocking, but Grim with the right comp actually has some pretty unique stuff it can do, while this, I think, is just kind of well-rounded. So I think it's still solid. It's a bit awkward to fit, mostly because any other slow weapon and you just get fucked by missiles. This kit doesn't help with that. That's the main thing. If missiles weren't in the meta, I think this kit would actually be even better, because missiles are the main counter to Booya and the main weapon. If we were in a meta with a very low amount of missiles, this kit would actually become way more threatening. So yeah, missiles shut this down so it can be counterpicked. And then the second thing is basically running it with another slow up and it's impossible. You can't really run this with a backline except for maybe ballpoint. Like that would be your one exception. Ballpoint might work with it because ballpoint can be played more aggressively. But in general, this thing struggles to play with other backlines because two slow weapons in a missile meta is just not a good idea. Honestly, I'm more content with the state of range than Dynamo because I feel like Dynamo is just kind of nuked its strengths. Like, it's a bit less drastic on the weaknesses, and I know this is something I talked about in the video already, but Dynamo does not do as many unique things well, and that's my big problem with it. I do still think it doesn't do anything bad, and therefore, you know, it's decent. Maybe you can win things with it. It's probably just mid-tier. It's not that bad. But if you're, like, at an objective standpoint, like, should I pick up Dynamos? Like, is there any real unique reason to play a Dynamo? That's very minimal. Even range arguably has more reasons to be used over it. Alright. There you go. That is my thoughts.